Welcome back. Uh, well, markets are actually uh, at a steady spot at this point in time. Actually, the Nifty has not moved at all. It's where we left it yesterday evening and the Sensex as well. Six points down. That's not saying much. The mid caps have shown some movement about a third of a percent higher. Of course, there are individual moves. Uh, uh, a lot of the public sector banks are giving up. Bank of Baroda, SBI, PNB are all down about one percent uh, and uh, Vedanta, Tech Mahindra all up two percent. So, of course, a lot of uh, uh, averaging out when I talk about the index, but largely it's a quiet market. And that gives us space to look at longer term investment themes. And this is exactly what we are going to do. On our own team, we have Arut Singhal joining us for that. But our guests, Ramdev Agarwal, the Joint Managing Director of Motilal Oswal Financial Services, uh, Manish Suntalia, Senior VP and Head Equities uh, PMS at Motilal Oswal AMC, and Tahir Bacha, the Senior VP and Fund Manager at uh, 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 Most AMC. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Thank and you. just to add, uh, this is because uh, their uh, uh, Asset Management Fund, the AUM has reached over 6,500 crores, that is over $1 billion in June and hence uh, what lessons have they learned is what we are going to ask them. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for the support. Well, uh, 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 to start with you, Ramdev, uh, mm. I'll come to your fund in just a bit, mm. but uh, the, what did this earnings season tell you? Uh, is the economy recovering at a micro level? Did more companies tell you that they sold more? Did uh, the imamis, dabbers tell you they sold more sashes? Uh, did uh, the power equipment or the capital goods guys tell you that they sold more volume, not revenue? Uh, I don't think that's the story. I think the, the, this this quarters. Of course, we are expecting some surprise in the earning side, but I'm really uh, uh, surprised by the extent of uh, margin expansion because of the collapse of the commodity prices, prices. oil and other uh, yes. lot of uh, soft commodity hard commodities which have fallen and uh, the pricing power has been fully used by the companies starting with Maruti, your Britannia, your uh, Pidlite and uh, Asian Paints, you name it, all the companies which had pricing power, their margin ex uh, EBITDA expansion has been almost 400 to 500 bips, which is staggering. On a 12-13% kind of business, you go to 18%, it's like a 50% expansion on it, then you don't care whether top line is growing or not. Absolutely. You know, so that's a kind of uh, sub and it is not the lowest oil price. Still, uh, I mean, after the results, yeah, uh, they've fallen, they, they fallen further. So mm -hmm. I think uh, for next two, three quarters, September, December, I think for the whole year, I think this segment is uh, really going to do very well. But Ramdi, so, isn't, that yeah. a, isn't this a risk as well? Because uh, if the top line doesn't grow, mm -hmm. then this is a bit of a one trick pony, right? I mean, if yeah. for some no, reason. We are talking about right now. Right yeah. now, the situation, see, this is all dynamic situation. Yeah. Economy is uh, recovering, okay. government has started spending, they are spending to the to the extent they can spend. So, clearly, uh, I am hearing some green shoots from the automotive markets and all, but uh, it has not become very strong. But I am hmm. quite sure as the uh, cumulative buildup of the uh, government expenditure happens, this is three months, six months, nine months, and then the revenue pick up. Mm. Because it is a circular kind of thing, you spend more, you get more revenue, you spend even more. Okay. So no, actually, I wanted to, to take Anuj's uh, question further. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, should not fund managers now stop worrying about top line and worry more about volume of sales? Because there is a secular fall in the realization, in the, uh, in the price. But that doesn't mean the company is not making money. They are able to cut prices probably because they are buying their inputs much cheaper. So as fund managers or even as you know, stock pickers, is top line going to be ignored and you will look at volume and margins? No, nothing will be ignored. Okay. Uh, I mean, fund manager is going to look at uh, in a specific company everything. In the sense mm. that company, if it is a cyclical company. No, no. Are you going to be put off just because revenue is like 5 percent, but uh, volumes and margins are uh, making up? No, no, no. It's a, see, it's a individual stock. I mean, every company has a different story. Yeah, of course. Say, uh, uh, a company say called, say, Britannia and all. So they have expanded the margin, they have got the volume, they have got the sales, everything going. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, good volume, good uh, top line and terrific uh, margin expansion. Okay. So you can get all uh, types of uh, colors of the companies, uh, but uh, if it is associated with the volume growth, pricing growth and margin expansion, that is the dream run. Mm. That is the dream run. So uh, volume expansion, but there will be a lot of companies where there is no margin right now, mm. but your volume is going to just explode. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, all kinds of stories will come. So, this is an opportune, opportune time and it is all going to happen in the next 6 months, 6 to 8 months. Okay. New stories are going to just yeah. uh, start. In, in, the, in fact, Britannia is up 200 percent in last one year, uh, as Ramde pointed out, uh, almost everything going in its favor. Tahir, uh, good morning. Uh, so, billion dollars in your uh, uh, 
uh, you know uh, funds uh, uh, what's the what's the next target you know we, we say that you know billion dollars is a lot but uh, given the kind of uh, equity culture that's now beginning to you know take place in india anecdotal evidence of a lot of gold investments real estate investments shifting into equities you know what kind of domestic flows do you think can come into equity markets so yeah, it's a great time. I mean, uh, we are uh, we, uh, this whole uh, rotation in uh, asset classes is clearly going to be beneficial to equities, and we are significantly underinvested in equities from a household perspective, as we all know, running into single digits mm -hmm. in terms of exposure. So there is always a lot of headroom which was available, uh, and the uh, market has probably started to realize that opportunity in front of them now with the new configuration of the government as as well as. Uh, the whole uh, economic configuration that we have right now. So I think the future is clearly exciting. I mean, if you look at the um, statistics on mutual funds itself, I mean, we've got uh, 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 a flow of four, five billion dollars in the last 12 months, uh, uh, and we've got an equal amount in the last 10 years. So you know, that's a staggering number, and uh, uh, probably, and we are still significantly below what we can probably be in terms of potential. So I think the headroom is enormous, and uh, many of the mutual funds are getting into shape. Uh, they're getting up very well. Uh, performances are improving, so I think we'll see a lot of action as far as domestic mutual funds. I hope uh, we come to a stage where our dependence on FIIs yeah. uh, and you know yes. talk about daily it's flows based on FII numbers, etc., yes. probably becomes much more muted going forward uh, than we have been in the past. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, I'm dying to come to the uh, stock specific uh, uh, lessons that you all got from uh, the last, the, the first one billion. Uh, let me start with you, Manish. You know, the big powerhouse or at least one of the big powerhouses in the last few weeks have been public sector banks. I've gone through all your uh, uh, lists. Barring state bank, there's nothing. You don't buy this idea. <laughs> Look, there is a lot of problem in the public sector banks. Yes, you, of course. You, you, but I, go, I thought buying in distress was what the market is doing. But is you. it the end of distress? That is the moot question. You know, uh, you know, the government has announced that 70,000 crores would be infused over a period of next 4-5 years. But is the problem not much more than what uh, you know, this 70,000 crore would do? Of course, it would alleviate a bit of the position, uh, the stress position. But size of the NPAs is just too big. You know, and uh, you know, Within the PSU banks, you know, a lot of NPAs, according to me, is still hiding within the restructuring thing, right? So now it's not very financing as well. So do you play valuation or do you play, uh, yeah, you know, the earnings growth? You know, what, what sort of an earnings growth is going to play out over the next? Okay, three, so four, not five your years. cup at all. I, I I really don't think that we are at the end of the NPA cycle just yet. Yeah, there was there was a grin on Ramdev's face when we spoke about PSU banks, and I remember the central bank story that uh, <laughs> Ramdev told us. But uh, Ramdev, that, that that apart, you know, you you know, you made a lot of money in some of these so-called high-priced stocks. You know, yeah. whether it's Asher Motors, yeah. Page Industries, Bosch. Bosch. Bajaj Finance. Uh, some of these stocks are the stocks where retail investors would not want to venture because you know optically the price yeah, is too high. Yeah. Uh, there's a bit of a scarcity premium in some of these stocks, but valuation-wise, these are very expensive stocks now. Uh, how do you justify some of these stocks as value picker now? Tahir has picked up all Did the Tahir, stocks. Why, yeah. But yeah, why would Tahir. you want to sit on? Uh, uh, would you? Uh, are you not tempted to book out? Not really. Any, uh, we have done a little bit of rationalization wherever we felt that the growth is significantly less than what the valuations are actually calling out today for. Uh, but then there have been many others uh, despite the run and probably despite uh, you know stretch valuations in the near term have a lot of headroom for growth. Uh, you know, uh, so what, what is the number that well. you look for? Uh, so uh, PEG, uh, how would you, you decide know, Aishar is too expensive or Bosch is too expensive? Yeah, I mean, if, if there's a stock let's say at 50 PE and uh, probably it is still uh, good enough for a growth of around 30-40%. Uh, at least visible growth mm -hmm. over the next uh, seven to eight quarters, uh, then that's something which is reasonably, we know that there could be a downside. Okay. We could probably see five, ten percent come off. Mm -hmm. But we know that the underlying growth is supportive of higher mm -hmm. valuations in general. Uh, but if there is a dichotomy to the extent that there is a stock which is trading at 90 p and probably growth is more like 10 percent, then that's something which is going a little over the top. So there you would probably feel the need to rationalize and maybe you know try and see if you can correct that position. Uh, despite the longer term franchise attractiveness of the franchise of that business. Just to add out here, you know, without taking specific names, uh, it's you take a weighted P of the portfolio per se, you know, mm -hmm. and then uh, the earnings growth, the ROE, you know, and there's nothing to say that, you know, we should only be looking at FI17 numbers. Markets are fixated about FI17, it is, you know, the, mark, the valuations are expensive. But business of the company would continue even beyond FI17, right? And we are nobody to tell to the markets what they should be looking at. It's so are, you, are you convinced by the business models that this kind of earnings growth that we have seen as the base goes higher, 
that kind of earnings growth That's will continue. That's what it is. You know, stock prices are nothing but evaluating what is the earnings growth and what is the longevity of the earnings growth. You know, that is if you if you get both these things right, you know, it's a matter of time when you know markets get it wrong as far as the longevity of the earnings growth is concerned. So you will not trade HDFC Bank for some of the new private Absolutely sector banks. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Why not, sir? Hmm? Why not? Uh, he said no longevity of the uh, growth. See, one is the see QGLP. I think this is because the, I guess oh, you're going to get a lot of private sector banks now. Yeah, uh, so we'll be open know, to it. I mean, at a I price guess the Ratnakars and all also will yeah, get so listed, we'll and you also have uh, IDFC. Yeah. And we will have. Uh, we are open to any any company which makes shows money. longevity. Yeah, longevity company is uh, high quality business, high quality management, uh, growth, longevity growth, not uh, eight quarters growth. I mean, like eight years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty. Years by the growth. time the company proves it, it's all to also become expensive. How would you that, uh, guess the longevity before you get so it? That's an art, no? Yes. That's an art, give us and that we are practicing. Give us some that, lessons. No, but lessons in the sense that see, I'm telling you the factors. We look at it. Every single company has to pass through QGLP process. Mm. Okay, quality of quality. business, quality of management. If both are not ten x each, it doesn't go through. Mm. We don't look at price. You all, are, you all are start with the price. Mm. See, if you the biggest problem in the market, in my uh, thing uh, opinion is that people do valuation without understanding the values. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So QGL is about the values. If you don't know the value, there is no point in looking at the price. Mm -hmm. If you don't know this is banana, how do you figure out what should be the price? Okay. You know. Fair enough. So I think the uh, we are spending ninety percent time, ninety five percent time, understanding the value. Mm -hmm. And once we know the value, then price is very easy. Okay. And you know. Uh, everybody's own money is also stuck with this. So it's not that we are speculating. Mm -hmm. We are investing. Seriously, we are investing. Okay. Well, let me come to another sector, oil and gas, which has made a lot of money for you. Uh, you very correctly have invested in HPBP and not the uh, uh, upstream companies sure. like uh, ONGC RIL. Why would you do that and why would you stick with it? Will you stick with it? The idea was very simple that you know uh, uh, the downstream companies is where uh, the uh, franchise value is significantly higher. Uh, uh, you know, if you look at these retail franchises like uh, HPC, LBPC, etc., they are uh, they are the ones which are the most durable. Uh, I mean, uh, as we discuss internally as well, that uh, you know these are retail uh, uh, businesses, actually retail businesses that you would like to be in. Okay. There are no alternative kind of businesses, real brick and mortar retail, but uh, no option. You can't actually do online. Uh, yeah, yeah. petrol and diesel. So, uh, and uh, then there are only three or four players uh, in the market, yeah. and uh, these are guys who have uh, are now seeing a significant transformation in the business value uh, because uh, earlier they were denied the due profitability that but they. But you should wouldn't buy. ever go upstream. It, 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 you don't see too many positives in those companies. So, uh, you know, we still have the issue of uh, the whole oil price, uh, or the under recovery burden, which is still going to sting them. And uh, uh, we need to see a situation where they get completely off it. If if that happens, then of course there is a good amount of franchise value, especially at current levels, even for some of these upstream companies. Manish, you have uh, comments in your portfolio. You know, it came out with numbers yesterday, and uh, after a long time, we saw the kind of rally. But overall, as a space, uh, would you stay invested in names like Cummins, Voltas, and do you think the the earnings recovery that we have started to see is that sustainable? Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, one of the themes that we um, in the PMS that we are playing on is the Make in India theme. Mm. Right? Okay. Uh, of course, you know India will move towards a self-sufficiency in the power situation. That could mean that Cummins as a primary backup power, the volumes would take a beating, you know, and their lower HP would have lower margins. But the Make in India themes means that they can manufacture here and outsource to the rest of the Cummins subsidiary all over the world. Okay. The 60 litre engine is now being exported to China. That is seeing huge amount of traction. The mining segment, you know, that is just about, you know, you know what Coal India's production targets are for the next five years, doubling of production. It is consumable engines. So, you know, as opposed to what the market believes, what is the growth trajectory, we significantly deviate from that opinion. And we have seen the numbers, how they are playing out. In spite of a gross margin contraction, the volume growth has just taken care of the entire uh, you know the growth trajectory has been very strong and similarly consumer discretionary now 21 percent market share in the room ac business you've seen the margins what we have seen in spite of the industry going through a slowdown you know uh, i think fi 17 for the industry as a whole should be a pent-up demand both from fi 16 and moving into fi 17 so at least you know i'm convinced about the growth let's see what the numbers are till now they have delivered okay we'll evaluate the situation how it goes 
Okay, uh, uh, one philosophical question for you and then more stock specific for mm. you all. Mm. Uh, you know, what we are now seeing is a fairly broad based mid cap uh, rally. Mm. You all have preferred to choose, you know, in your fund to 50 stocks which you all monitor very closely. You change that philosophy no, or change the stocks? No, it's a focus. See, this is a focus strategy. This is part of the QGLP process. Uh, you can know, as a fund manager, you can know very few stocks. Okay. It's impossible to uh, know so seventy that will remain your stocks. philosophy. That we, that is the core of the philosophy that we. In fact, if you see the names, we have chosen the names: focused twenty-five, focused thirty, focused yes. thirty-five. It's a focus series. So, though we have taken permission for twenty-five, thirty, forty stocks, we don't invest in more than seventeen, eighteen stocks. Okay. Twenty is absolute Lakshman Rekha. Okay. So we don't have, and we are going to maintain that. And uh, uh, that may constrain. I mean, uh, that that may uh, bring some kind of capacity capacity constraint. How much money we can yes. take uh, till the performance gets hurt? Mm. But uh, still, the promise is that will remain focused. We'll have fewer companies, and we'll have a chunky allocations to the. Because if you have convictions on the stock, you have to buy eight nine percent. Okay. I mean, with point, half percent. Why did you percent, then? Why are you getting out of power mech? You had 22 percent. You are now only 2 <laughs> percent. That's a different. Percent. That's not part of the mutual fund. That's in private equity, and that fund is coming to an end. I, actually, the tenure is we on. We have to wind up period. the fund. We have to wind up the fund by December 2016, okay. and I, I we are going to line up 10 more IPOs in next uh, uh, one year. Okay. So uh, clearly, this this is I mean these are the best pieces of the businesses which we are selling right now. Okay. So clearly, uh, I am under uh, compulsion to close the I mean sell it off, and uh, good that uh, markets are a little warm. So that we can, uh, you know, kind of offer uh, yeah. uh, to the public, but it is under compulsion that we have to sell. Okay. Tahir, I really have to ask this one. Uh, your, your biggest, you know, uh, uh, stock has been Maruti. Uh, we've been talking about this, yeah. uh, and you have been bullish at all levels on Maruti. Yeah. Is this still a yen story playing out, or do you see a volume growth story as well over the next few years? And would you stay invested in a stock like this, or would you add more at current levels? So we are up to our limits <laughs> as far as Maruti goes in our fund. So uh, unfortunately, we can't buy beyond that 10% limit. We've almost gone to 9.9, .9, whatever that mm -hmm. number is. So, yeah. so I think, uh, yeah, so we, we remain extremely positive. I think uh, uh, the company has uh, done its bit in terms of ensuring a very, very right. healthy product pipeline. They have probably benefited out of uh, the currency many mo much more than uh, many others in the in the business. Uh, but at the same time, they've. Uh, I think now going forward, the, uh, the story is going to be more about the top line and the growth and volumes. Uh, plus, uh, market will be keenly watching their uh, success in the higher end because uh, till now it has always been perceived uh, that you know Maruti is essentially about small cars and compact compact cars. And yes, it is. Uh, even probably for the next 10 years, it will remain so. Mm. But clearly, they are adding on to the new piece. Uh, they are taking steps in the right direction. Uh, separate brand, separate uh, a suite of products coming up, uh, and it remains the most profitable enterprise. But so you know, I, was, I was reading somewhere it's it's its market cap is now higher than Suzuki's itself. Uh, uh, I think Suzuki itself is all about Maruti India, so you know uh, it's not surprising in a way that uh, 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 stock is hitting. It's not a Japan story, it's an India story. Uh, what's happening to Maruti Suzuki India? So I guess it's always been so, but now the true color of the value of the business is uh, emerging. So uh, we were fortunate to actually get a lot of it in the distress of the last two three years when a lot of problems were happening <coughs> with the company. Yeah. So it is this about you know buying some very good quality companies in distress and then okay. you make some super normal returns. Okay, your most interesting stocks for the next uh, one billion opportunity or one trillion uh, opportunity, Monish. Uh, you know you have DCB. Uh, would you prefer it over uh, Kotak Mahindra? You have specialty restaurants. Would you prefer it over uh, uh, Jubilant Foodworks? Uh, why these? So see, a company has a break-up value, a franchise value and a growth value, right? And uh, out of these three values, if there is a less than fair value that is coming out in the stock price, you know, there is an opportunity. So at 600 odd crore market cap, whether speciality ha does have the room to grow, does the franchise value uh, represent a value much superior than what the market cap is? Because traditionally his ROEs and ROCs have been quite good. So it's a Play in the consumption space, dining out, you know, this has gone through a slowdown that creates an opportunity. If we talk about a DCB, it, is it the next HDFC bank in the making? Everything begins with a small, mm -hmm. you know, 10,000 crore book, 3,000 crore market cap. I think the credit appraisal is their chief competitive advantage, okay? And you know, it's the, Aga Khan the soul of a bank, absolutely. You know, it's the, Aga, it's the Aga Khan Foundation which is the promoter, yes, and which also promoted HDFC bank. So that learning is there, Same right? So, and you are able to grow your balance sheet 25%, yeah. 
with minimal NPS. That is all that we need for a bank to do right. And okay. if that comes, markets are okay about it. Okay, uh, Ramdev, really have to ask you this one. Uh, <laughs> how do you play a story like Nestle? Because you know this uh, this yeah. whole scarcity premium, of course, in terms of equity, but you know, 25% of your business is going through the, the kind of mess That's that it's right. going through. Mm -hmm. uh, good opportunity right now for Nestle, or would you rather let it pass and look at it later? I'm really surprised by the price movement of Nestle despite uh, once in a 30 year kind of a loss and yet the brand is not back on the shelves. Mm -hmm. I mean, now I think there is a much higher move. Uh, mm -hmm. I can see much more sympathetic yes. statements in the headlines today. Yes. But yet the permissions are not come, brands are not yes. back and it hurts a lot. Mm -hmm. This kind of brands out of the shelf for a long period. And despite that, uh, the it's almost all time high. Yes, the price yes. is not come. Practically there. Yeah. Yes. So uh, market has voted with full confidence. Uh, see, with, uh, with the current valuation, uh, uh, it will be a very average return. I mean, even if the company does very well, mm. but longevity, if you want 15-17% return for next 20 years, 25 years, you can you can buy even at current price with a. So, a pension fund should buy. <laughs> yeah, it's actually fit for a pension fund, and probably it will be an index return. If index has done 17% for last 34 years, mm. clearly it would match or probably be out 2%, 3% higher. Okay. You know, uh, because uh, you are buying at 65, 70 p. Even if you talk about the normal p. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so I think it's a uh, it's a uh, lo very long term, very good investment. But it is not a multi beggar by any stretch of imagination. Okay, that's very useful advice. Actually, we have many more such questions for you. But yeah. the bell is ringing in our ears. Yeah. We are told the show time is over. Thank you yeah. very Thanks. much, uh, Ramdev, Tahir, and Manish for dropping in, and uh, wish you all the very best for uh, the Thanks. subsequent many billions uh, yeah. that your fund will add. Yeah. We have to wrap up uh, Bazaar on that note. Thanks for watching. Traders only coming up in a minute. CNBC TV 18, celebrating 15 years of leadership.